Today on how to drink, I'm making a penicillin, a drink that I've had a lot of requests for. So, see you after the jump. Is that what they still say? I've never had a penicillin before, but it's been requested a lot, and I thought it's really something we ought to tackle. Uh, this is a Sam Ross original. He made it up while he was working down at Milk and Honey, and if you want the recipe, uh, the best place to find it, other than my show, would be right here in Sasa Petrosky's Regarding Cocktails. Uh, great, great bar book. Um, all the drinks from Milk and Honey in one place. Uh, very beautiful design. Uh, Fadon. In case you were wondering who the publisher was, they wanted to make sure you knew. And so, this is the penicillin. We're doing things a little bit backwards today on how to drink. We're trying something new. Let's give it a taste. Okay. So, I actually, I like this. Um, it is smoky and tart and gingery and a little bit sweet in all the right ways. Um, I've had a few sips off of this now, and one of the ingredients in this is actually a float of an Isla Scotch on it. My float might have been a little thick because my first few sips was very intense, and I'm not... Um, Islas are something I personally got to be in just the right kind of mood for. And I don't know that I was, honestly. Uh, now that I've sipped off some of that float, there's still plenty on there. I think that this is a little bit more tempered down and I'm liking it a lot better. Let me give you another note on that. Let's go one more time. You can actually see it floating on there, actually. It's pretty cool. You got a real visual indicator of where the Isla line is on this. It's a lovely, like, smoky sour, I guess would be the best way to describe it. A smoky sour. I get just a little bit of um, malt for just the faintest moment, but really the dominant flavors for me are the iodine kind of salty smoke from the Compass Box Glasgow blend and the ginger and the lemon. Uh, that, is, that is where this drink seems to really reside uh, heavily. I get just the faint, I mean, fleeting moment of like sweet malty scotch. But that is gone very quickly and replaced by that ginger lemon combination. This is a cool drink. Garnished, of course, with some uh, candied ginger, which you can make as part of making ginger syrup, but I actually just store bought some because I did our kind of rapid infusion on this one. So I took some ginger, sliced it real thin, threw it into a pot with sugar and water, cooked it up until the sugar was dissolved, took that, dumped the whole thing into an ISI whipper and charged it twice with nitrous. Got a very strong ginger syrup in very short amount of time. I think this is maybe my new me method for making ginger syrup. I've never tried the rapid infusion method on it before. I don't know if anybody else is using rapid infusion for that, but probably they are. And so I've got this drink in my hand. I'll just go back one more time. It's getting better the longer it sits in the glass. A lot more balanced now. Very pleasant, sweet, sour, kind of whiskey sour thing going on. With the honey and the lemon, it's a lovely drink. And uh, let's talk about how we got here. How did we get it in the glass? Well, let's make it right now. Uh, just bear with me for one minute while I talk to you about Bright Cellars, because I don't actually know a whole lot about wine. I'll go to the liquor store knowing that I need a red or a white or a sparkling, and then I will wander the aisles until I find a label that looks cool. On the other hand, when I go to Bright Cellars, I fill out a seven question quiz, and then they send it to me in the mail. And they really know what they're doing. So much so that they guarantee that you're gonna like it. And if you don't, they'll replace that bottle with your next box. That's pretty cool. They give you this card that comes with every bottle. It tells you what temperature be served at, uh, how to store that, uh, how long it'll be fresh for, where it's made, how it's made, who makes it. All these things that I don't know. I love it. It's fantastic. All that kind of extra little information. Very handy stuff. Uh, and the very cool thing is that if you follow the link below and take the seven question quiz, you're gonna get your first box of six bottles for half off. So what have you got to lose? They guarantee that you're gonna like it, you get half off, and uh, you don't have to go shopping. Seems like a win-win-win to me. So I hope you'll check it out. And uh, now on with your regularly scheduled how to drink content. Thank you. We need a half an ounce of honey syrup. Honey syrup is very simple. It's nothing more than honey and water in equal parts. Why would you make a honey syrup? Honey does not want to pour very well. And so 
by mixing it with water, we can, we can create something that's a little bit more portable. You need a half an ounce of ginger syrup. And three quarters of an ounce lemon juice. And I need two ounces of blended scotch. Now I know from reading uh, the On Cocktails book that the scotch in question should be something from Compass Box, probably the Glasgow blend. This is all in that smoky Isla PD vein of scotch, so we want two ounces here. At this point, the drink is shaken. I like to put one big cube in there, solid, and then I like to have another one that's cracked. The big one provides weight and heft and really moves a lot of air around, really helps the thing aerate, and the small little pieces provide dilution and chilling much better than the big one does. The combination is, according to Dave Arnold, the best possible configuration for your shaker. Do you need to shake that way? No. Strain this into a double rocks glass over a large ice cube. In my case, my cubes are always a little too big, so we shave them down a bit. Strain this guy in there. I'm gonna double strain this because I want a fast pour, because I do, I'm lazy, and because I saw that there was a lemon seed in there that I wanted to make sure I didn't put in my drink. The final ingredient on this is to put a float of some kind of a um, Isla scotch on there. I happen to have a bottle of Lagavulin 16. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Cork review. This is a good cork. Listen to that sound. That. Dry and tight. Love it. Looks to me... No, I think that's natural. I think that's natural. I, 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 think, it's a, I think it's a natural cork. Ooh! That's like a zipper going in. This is a good cork. Lagavulin, only the best corks, I think. Ooh, like music to my ears. So I did this for the open as well, um, and I think I went a little heavy on that for my float because the first few sips were pure Lagavulin. So I'm going to go for just a scant float here. A little bit is really gonna go a long way, I think. Yeah, like that is more than sufficient. For me, for me, I mean, this is, you make your drink the way you want to. Garnish that with a couple pieces of candied ginger. And there it is, the penicillin by Sam Ross, as created at Milk and Honey. That's really lovely. I made it much better the second time. Well, this is about where you found me. Boy, I like that, that's great. It has a real, it combines up to some kind of an herbal, experience. It's, it's, I, I would say it's not terribly distant from chartreuse, actually, when you put it all together. A unique drink. That's really cool. Oh, I love that. It keeps getting better. A little more time. I, personally, okay. Personally, I think this drink, a little time in the glass, dramatically improves it for my taste. Um, and now this is something that I truly adore. Uh, right out of the shaker, it can be a little intense for me, but I am, I'm kind of a peat wimp. And this drink, I think, is supposed to be pretty peaty. If I'm not mistaken, the glass co blend is correct, and an Isla float is correct. I, I think we made it exactly to spec, and people love it, so. It's backwards day at How to Drink. We're doing tasting notes first, drink up second. What do you guys think about this format of the show? You can tell me in the comments, but your actions will speak louder than words. I'll be watching retention closely. My watches are provided by Crown & Caliber. If you're into watches, you should check them out. This week's watch is a, I think it's a 1973 uh, Rolex day date in gold with an acrylic crystal and a uh, aftermarket leather strap. I think that the original bracelet was missing. Frankly, I like it better on the leather than a metal bracelet. I think that the gold all the way around would be too much for me. In case you were wondering, all of my barware is provided by Barfly Mixology Gear. There's a link to them in the pinned comment below. Uh, if you wanna buy anything I'm using on the show, it's right down there. Uh, the glassware is purchased from Riedel Glassware. If you like this glass, I'll put a link there too. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink, Twitter How to Drink, Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD.
And because of that Twitch thing, I gotta do something right now that I never have done on the show before. Uh, this is my desk setup. If you haven't been over to my Twitch stream, I'm sorry, this might be very unfamiliar to you. But uh, what I didn't know when I recorded this episode is that on tonight, March 16th, my Dungeons and Dragons stream is starting up again. So if you're into D&D and you wanna hang out with me and some friends while we play for three, four hours, I don't know, as long as we can go, uh, swing by twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. So I will see you then, I hope. Uh, all right, thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Penicillin. Penicillin. Some other... We could come up with like an amoxicillin. Or a tetracycline. Oh man, like the original. The old school version of this would be just smallpox. No, cowpox. Yeah. A nice glass of cowpox. The roots version of the penicillin. He drinks a whiskey drink. He drinks a lager drink. It drinks the songs that remind him of the good times and the songs that remind him of the better times. I get knocked down, but I get up again. And I'm never gonna keep it down.